Guys, today we'll be talking about using K and curves to construct a GZ curve for ship stability. And this is advanced ship stability for mates and masters. Uh, before I start with today's topic, let me tell you why K and curves uh, are used in ship stability. So if you go back to the previous question that we did for cross curves of stability, and I will focus on this part here. So remember this figure here um, that uh, we had uh, two kgs here. So there was an assumed height of the kg as denoted by the small g. And this is the assumed height for which the cross curves of stability are constructed. And then we had the kg with a capital G. And this is the actual height of the center of the gravity of the voyage, uh, which was inclusive of also the free surface correction. So we had two kgs here. And depending on whether the actual kg was uh, smaller or larger than the assumed kg, there was a correction that had to be applied to the gz that we obtained from the cross curves of stability here. So this was the correction here. And we explained why this correction is uh, positive uh, when the assumed height of kg is larger than the actual kg. And similarly, this correction is negative when the uh, assumed height is, of course, less than the actual kg. So as you could see in the figure, the kg uh, with the capital G and kg with the small g would change its position as I will show you now over here. So, so you can see here I have recreated that uh, those two situations here. So in one, you can see here that the actual kg here is less than the assumed kg. And in the other figure, the actual kg, uh, the actual kg here with the capital G is more than the assumed kg for which the cross curves were constructed. Now, in one, you had to add the correction. In the other, you had to subtract the correction uh, to the gz that you obtained from the cross curves of stability. Now, this was a bit of... Uh, complicated and sometimes uh, if you're doing it on the ship you as a chief officer may add the correction instead of subtracting it or vice versa so these uh, in order to eliminate this possibility uh, some shipyards draw the cross curves for an assumed value of 0 kg with a small g so here small kg is 0 all right so there is no actual kg we, uh, sorry, assumed kg. We only have the actual height of the center of gravity as denoted by the capital G. All right. So here instead of the, so here uh, the writing lever becomes Kn instead of a uh, small gz as you see in the top two figures. So the writing lever in this case becomes Kn. Kn becomes the writing lever of the with the small g and z. So because the fluid kg of the voyage will always be positive, in this case, kn is always greater than gz. All right, so the uh, kn is always greater than gz. So therefore, the correction, as you can see here that I have displayed here, uh, the gz that we obtain from the curves, the correction of kg sine theta will always be subtracted from kn to get the gz so kn minus kg sine theta will give the gz so if you look in the drawing here uh, gz is equal to xn all right this is x and xn and xn equals to kn minus kx kn minus kx the small n that is equal to xn now, if you look at the triangle GKX, which is this triangle here, you can see here KX will be equal to KG sine theta. All right. Therefore, in this case, GZ becomes equal to, if I put this formula here, then GZ becomes equal to KN minus KG sine theta. So we obtain KN from the KN curves and always subtract the correction of KG sine theta to get the final gz or the writing lever all right so don't worry too much about that but i thought before we start with the kn curves i'll show you why this correction exists 
and uh, why are we using it in the question so we'll take up a question today and in this question we are required to construct the gz curve uh, when the displacement of the ship is given as 65000 tons the km is 13.42 the kg solid is 8.2 meters the free surface moment is 6500 tons meter and once you construct the gz curve so from the gz curve constructed you have to find the gz at what 70 degrees angle of heel so the first thing that we do is obtain the free surface correction and that is obtained by dividing the free surface moment by the displacement so as you all know that the free surface correction is a correction applied to the gm solid uh, it is always uh, subtracted from the gm solid to get the gm fluid and this correction applies uh, in cases where the vessels have slack tanks because of which there is a virtual loss of gm during the voyage and that is one consideration that we have to take into account uh, before we sail out from the port so the gm that we use for sailing or from the port is gm fluid because it is much reduced from gm solid and it also takes into account the free surface movement that may occur during the voyage so 6500 divided by 65000 will give us a free surface correction of 0 0.100 so 6500 and 65000 are values given to us in the question then we calculate kg fluid so just like gm solid is subtract so free surface correction is subtracted from gm solid to get gm fluid the opposite happens with kg fluid so kg fluid is equal to kg solid plus fsc all right so in comparison if you think about it gm fluid is equal to gm solid minus fsc but the inverse reaction occurs with the kg fluid so in this case the kg solid is given to us as 8.2 meters in the question and 0 0.10 free surface correction is just now being calculated by us in that case we get a kg fluid of 8.30 meters all right this is our kg fluid and then to calculate our gm fluid we have km minus kg fluid which is 13.42 km is given to us in the question and we subtract the kg that we have just calculated and we get the gm fluid as 5.12 meters all right now we'll be using kn curves to obtain the data of the kn for a displacement of 65,000 tons for the various angles of heel that the ship may experience during the voyage so here all right so theta is the angle of heel and if we go into the kn curves for a displacement of 65,000 let's go into the kn curves here so you can see here these are the kn curves and if i can show it to you 65,000 will be somewhere over here right between 60 and 70 so for every, for different angles of heel which is given here as 10 degrees 20 degrees 30 45 60 and 75 uh, just go up perpendicular from 65,000 as you keep going up wherever you intersect the curve of uh, the heel just draw a parallel line to the y axis like this and that you get the value of kn from the y axis here all right so as you keep going up draw a perpendicular line all the way from 65000 going up all right so i'll draw a perpendicular line here just just draw a perpendicular line here and wherever it cross cuts the cross the the kn curves and for various angles of field just draw a parallel line to the x axis and obtain the value of the kn for various angles of heel you can only obtain the ones which are given to you in the curve so they are not 10 20 30 40 it's 10 20 30 45 60 75 there are some random numbers here and these are the values for which you can get the kn values so once you use the curves to get the kn values we go back to the calculation and we assume that we have found the kn now from the kn curves but to that we have to apply a correction of kg sin theta which is always subtracted so the advantage with using kn curves is that uh, you have to remember only one correction which is always negative which is always subtracted uh, whereas when we were using cross curves of stability to obtain the gz we had to sometime add the correction and sometimes subtract the correction depending on a comparison of the actual kg with the assumed kg for which the curves were created so you get the difference all right so you watch my previous video as well where i have discussed the cross curves of stability 
and you will see uh, what I'm talking about there uh, clearly as well. So here using k and curves gives us a distinct advantage of just remembering that we always have to subtract the correction of kg sin theta. So kg as we calculated above, kg is kg fluid. So I will put kg fluid here is 8.3. So in each case, subtract 8.3 multiplied by sine of the angle of field. So in the first case is 10 degrees, the second case 20, 30, 45, 60 and 75 degrees of angle of field. These are also the angles of field that were provided to us in the KN curves. All right. So every time you do that, you will get the GZ value after the correction applied to the KN. All right. Uh, in each case here, the GZ value is provided here. So these are the GZ values. So we will create a GZ curve for the values of GZ on the Y axis against the values of angle of heel on the X axis that you see here. So of course you don't have the value of GZ for every angle of heel at 10 degrees interval. So you will draw the curve for the values of 10 degrees, 20, 30, and then you will draw it for uh, a value of 45 degrees, right? And then the other two values are 60 degrees and somewhere here will be 75 degrees. All right. So that is what you should be drawing the values for. So once you put the GZ value, so let me show you an example here. So let's say the angle of heel is 10 degrees, right? So for a value of 10 degrees, your GZ is 0.859. So what you do is you will go, uh, you will draw the GZ value. So you see the GZ values and have an assessment of what is the largest value. So the largest value of the GZ is 4.631. So you need a scale on the Y axis from zero to about five, which I've drawn here, right? Because the maximum value is about 4.6. So make sure that you measure out your scale. They should be equally placed at equal intervals. So of course you need a GZ value of 0.859 as you go up from 10 degrees. So somewhere here, go and you will find 859 here. So that's why the curve is cutting somewhere here. All right, so this is 0.859. So of course it will depend on what scale you take, but I'm just giving you an idea of how to make these curves. Then again, for 20 degrees, your GZ value is 1.961. So you will go up from 20 degrees till that time, you get a value of 1.961. So this is 1.961 will be somewhere very here. So that these are the values you will take. So you will take these different values uh, for GZ and then you will join the dots and give the curve a smoothening on the top. So when you are turning the curve, the curve, give it a smooth uh, smoothening. Make sure it's a curve. Don't make it like straight lines. You have to draw it like a curve. And once you get the curve, all you have to then do, the question asks you to find out the value of the GZ at 70 degrees angle of heat. So all you have to do is basically uh, you see 70 degrees is here and we didn't have the value of uh, angle of field for 70 degrees. Oh, sorry, 75 degrees is not here. I'm sorry, <laughs> 75 degrees is somewhere here. All right, so my apologies for that. So I will delete that 75 degrees. I got confused with 65 and 75, 75 will be here. So for 70 degrees of angle of field, we didn't have the value of GZ. So just draw a perpendicular from 70 degrees, as you see the blue line. And then wherever it cuts the curve, here it cuts it here draw a parallel line to the x-axis all the way meeting at gz so here you will get the value of gz i have got the value of 3.80 uh, you will get similar values again it depends on how you draw the curve so don't get too bogged down by my value here or the value that you find in the books because how you draw the curve how thick is your pencil how you smoothen the curve also will vary the answers a little bit go as per your scale as, as long as you draw the curve to the scale and you smoothen out the curve, your answer should be very close to what I have shown you on the screen. But to get, don't get bogged down by the exact value. Don't, have, don't think that you have to get a value of 3.8. It could be slightly different, but close to the value that I have shown. All right. And then, of course, additionally, what you can do is, as you learned from the cross curves of stability in my previous video, if you draw a perpendicular from the angle of heel value of 57.3 degrees, just draw a perpendicular and then draw a tangent from the zero degrees line as you see by the red line here this is the tangent T draw a tangent to the curve tangent to the curve starting from zero degrees right wherever this tangent meets the perpendicular line drawn from 57.3 degrees uh, this intersection here draw a parallel line to the x-axis and that will give you the value of the 
initial GM as well that the vessel will sail out with. All right, so this is again a GZ curve is very valuable to the chief officer on the ship. Uh, you are supposed to construct this curve and get a range or access or get a range of your stability, get an idea about the range of your stability and also the vanishing stability at which the GZ will become zero again. So you get all this useful information as we have discussed in the previous video. Uh, these days, of course, in the Lodicator, just you put in the values and you can uh, generate a GZ curve right from the computer. But it's a good idea for you guys to know how to construct one using the KN curves as well. And tr when you go on the ship, uh, try to do it, try to do a manual calculation, try to do a manual calculation as well as a manual drawing of the curve. And it's, these are interesting exercises you can perform on the ship. All right. So guys, I'll come soon with my next video. And but all the best with your studies and keep subscribing uh, and you get notification about my future videos as well. I'm trying to cover a wide range of topics, but it takes me time to make videos. So please bear with me, stay patient and I'll definitely try and cover your topic uh, when you suggest it to me. I'll see you guys soon.